Hello, and welcome back to ECMATH. Today we're going to talk about complex numbers in polar form. This is going to be the first of a couple videos. This first video we're just going to talk about uh, multiplying and dividing these complex numbers and how the polar form of those numbers can be useful in doing so. So let's start with a little warm-up problem that's going to remind us everything that's going on with complex numbers. Uh, so say that we were going to consider the complex number negative 3 minus 4i. Uh, some things to remember is, you know, when we talked about complex numbers, we always say they're of the form a plus bi, and so in this case the a is negative 3 and the b is just the coefficient, uh, is negative 4. So we, even though the plus is there, we write it as minus 4. Um, first job in this problem is plotted on the complex plane, and we've seen this complex plane before. I think we saw it in chapter 2. The idea of the complex plane is as follows. Instead of an x and y axis, we imagine there's a real axis and an imaginary axis. And we plot the a values along the real axis and the b values along the imaginary axis. And that creates a complex point. So if a is negative 3, we count 1, 2, 3. And b is negative 4, we do 1, 2, 3, 4. And I would say that this point is negative 3 minus 4i. So the complex plane, plotting points on the complex plane, it correlates with the point in x and y, negative 3, negative 4. So we have that, that correlation. All right, next, find the absolute value of negative 3 minus 4i. So absolute value is a little bit different. Uh, I think we've done it before. But absolute value doesn't just make everything positive. So for example, it is not... 3 plus 4i, right? Like if you think absolute value just makes all the negatives go away, then you're thinking about absolute value wrong. What absolute value means is distance from 0. So I'm going to draw a segment to indicate the distance from 0 for this number. And the distance from 0 here is two-dimensional, so you have to solve it by doing a uh, distance formula. The distance formula here is the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared, technically I guess negative 3, negative 4, but it's going to be the same thing, which ends up being the square root of 25, which is 5. So the absolute value of negative 3 minus 4i equals 5. I also have another name for this that I'm going to introduce. I don't think we've done this name before. This is going to be called the modulus of this number, negative 3 minus 4i. Now, why? I'm not sure. Um, but you can also think about modulus, if you think about this as being, you know, if you think back to trig, this is kind of like a radius, right? Or think back to polar, it's kind of like a radius. Okay, so we've worked up this number, and now I'm looking at this last direction, c, that says express this number in polar form using degrees. I say, huh, polar form. I've never done polar form on a complex number before. What would I do here? Well, remember that in polar, every point has a radius and an angle, right? And a point is listed as r comma theta, radius comma angle. I feel like in part b, I just found the radius. So all what I'm going to need to find is the angle, and then I'm going to have to think about how to express it. So how do I find this angle? Well, probably the best way is to use your calculator. There it is. It said degrees. Oh, where is she? Get back here. There we go. And I'm going to switch to my mode to degrees. You could do this in radians, but uh, the degree angle is going to be fine here, and it's a little easier to visualize. I'm going to do tangent inverse of opposite, which is negative uh, 4 divided by adjacent, which is negative 3. I get about, I'm going to say 53.1 degrees. Now notice that that's not the entire angle. That's just the angle right here because negative, the uh, tangent inverse doesn't actually give you a quadrant 3 angle. So I'm going to add 180 to that to find the full angle, 233.1. So I'm going to say theta is equal to 233.1. Okay, so if I want to think about this number in polar form, um, I now know some important things. I know that the radius or modulus is equal to 5, 
and I know that the angle is equal to 233.1. Now here's something that you've definitely not seen before, which is the official polar form for this number, or the way that we express it. And I'll do it down here in this space. So the way we're going to write this is 5 cosine 233.1 plus i, uh, how do I want to write it? It's usually written as 5i sine 233.1. Now what? Another way it's sometimes written is like this, with the 5 factored out. 5 cosine of 233.1 plus i sine 233.1. Close paren. Mm, yeah. And those, of course, mean the same thing. The second one just has the 5 factored out. Why is it written in this weird way? Well, it's because this number originally was of the form a plus b i, or you could think about it as x plus y i. But we know in polar that x is r cosine theta and y is r sine theta. So when I write 5, uh, when I write 5 sine 233.1, what I'm really basically writing is y. And when I write 5 cosine 233.1, I'm really writing x. And the i is i. So I have this idea of uh, a plus bi, if you think about it as x plus yi, and use our idea from polar, um, and if we know the angle and we know the radius, we can write a complex number in that thing that I'm calling polar form. And, oh, that's a nice parallelogram or trapezoid. Uh, and polar form is really cool. What's most important about this is not the actual form. You have to know the form and, and write it correctly and, and stuff. Uh, but what's really important, I will say, are the, the actual details about the number, the radius and the angle, uh, or the... Uh, we sometimes call them the modulus and the argument. All right, so let's go formalize this out. I'll give you the, the formula in a second. So if you have a complex number, in general, it's given you know a, as a plus bi. That's what we call rectangular form. Let's say rect. The polar form is r cosine theta plus i sine theta or r cosine theta plus r i, I'm going to do it as i r sine theta. And those should represent the same numbers, and the key correlation is that a should match with r cosine theta, and b should match with r sine theta. So there's that, that correlation. Um, some terms, the r, no matter where it is, is called the modulus. And the theta is called the argument. I think mathematicians give these things names just so they don't, they, they feel they want to sound smart. They don't want to just be like the, the, the theta. They want to talk about the argument. Um, but argument is in general just our word for the input to a function. We've been using it, I believe, all year. So it shouldn't surprise you that that word is coming back here. Um, all right, so the polar form of a complex number looks like this. How can we apply it? Well, let's do some examples. So say I was given the number uh, 4 cosine 5 pi over 3 plus i sine 5 pi over 3. Uh, first, I observe that it's, I first observe it's a complex number because it has an i. All right, so I'm told it's a complex number, but it has an i as well. Uh, a couple other things I note. One, cosine of 5 pi over 3 is on the unit circle, and sine of 5 pi over 3 is on the unit circle. So I could probably just evaluate these, and I think I will uh, in step 3 when I express it in rectangular form. But I'm not doing that until step 3. First, I'm going to plot this in the complex plane just to show you how easy it is. So when I recognize the form, that this is of the form r cosine theta plus i sine theta, right? That's the form of a complex number. I recognize this is in polar form. So that tells me that the 
modulus is 4, and the argument is 5 pi over 3. So to plot this number, I don't need to do any trig. I need to do nothing except uh, go to the angle 5 pi over 3, which is down here, and count out oh, a radius. I'm not going to do this to scale of four units and I will say if this number was called Z then this point would be a representation of Z. So that was pretty easy. It's in fact almost easier than, than counting out the squares. So you just if you know where the angles are you go to the angle you count it out. All right find the absolute value. Well again um, instead of having to do anything with the Pythagorean theorem square roots the absolute value is just the distance from zero. The absolute value is four. So that was pretty easy. Now we can express it in rectangular form to see what it would have been if we if we weren't using polar. Well, to do that, you have to evaluate the cosine of five pi over three, which is root three over two plus i sine 5 pi over 3 is 1 half. Let me color code this for you. So the cosine part I'm evaluating here. The sine part I'm evaluating here. Uh, one of those is negative. Oh, the sine part's negative. There we go. And that's still multiplied by 4 on the outside. Right? So I'm doing, I still see that 4. But I'm now going to bring the 4 in. And so that becomes, uh, 4 comes in here and I get 2 root 3, and the 4 comes over here, plus, uh, it's going to be minus, because it was minus 1 half, 4 times 1 half is 2, times i is 2i. And so the rectangular uh, complex number is 2 root 3 minus 2i. Uh, and so that's how you switch from polar form to rectangular form, is you just evaluate the, the trig inside, and if it's a unit circle angle, you can go to the unit circle, if it's not an even angle on your unit circle, then just go to your calculator and evaluate it that way. So now let's look at what happens if you multiply two complex numbers. Now here I have two complex numbers in rectangular form, and I'm multi going to multiply them. Uh, remember how this works. You do have to foil this out, all the terms. They're not conjugate, so nothing things aren't going to cancel nicely, but you'll get the first two terms. You get negative 1. Um, then I'll do uh, negative 1 times i, so I get minus i. And I do negative i times 1, and I get minus i. And then I do minus i times positive i, so I end up with minus i squared. I then know that i squared itself is negative 1, and it's minus negative 1, so it really is kind of like negative 1 plus 1 minus 2i, or just minus 2i. That was not so bad, but it happened to be that I chose you an easy example. But I want to tell you a secret. This is a great secret of, of math. I did not do this before coming up with the example, but even though I didn't do that ahead of time, I knew what the answer would be. Here's how. There is a secret about the angles of each of these numbers. I'm going to call this first number Z1 and the second number Z2. Right, Z is the, the symbol for the complex plane. Uh, so often we, you know, I don't know why they chose Z, I guess because we already used X and Y. Um, so uh, I'm going to call the first one Z1 and the second one Z2. And let's plot these each out on the complex plane. So Z1, I'll plot in green, is, uh, we'll do two squares, negative 1 plus I. Oh, that's not quite where I thought it was. There we go. Negative uh, 1 minus I is here. And z2 is negative 1 is 1 plus i, so we'll do 1 and i. So it looks like they're opposite. That's not actually what I planned out, but uh, that's going to be fine. Okay, so now what I want to do is draw out each of these in terms of their radius and their angle. I'll start here with the blue one. The angle appears to be, and you could prove it with some trig, it's 45 degrees, and the radius is this is 2 root 2. No, wait. Squares are wrong. The radius is just 1 root 2 because each of these is 1. So 1 squared plus 1 squared is 2. For the z1, we still have to count the angle all the way around from the positive x-axis. So the angle here is going to be uh, 180 plus 
another 45, so that's 225 degrees. And the radius is still square root of 2. But I want to think about something. When I multiplied these numbers, what a, the result, where did the result go? Right, It was 2i. So that would be 1, 2, down here. Negative 2i was the result. And I want you to see, notice something, which is that if you take the blue angle and add it to the green angle, and you could even say, hey, let's put that, take that blue angle and like move it over here. Notice what you got. 225 plus 45 is 270. That is, you get to the answer. So it appears that maybe we can add the angles, question mark. And that is actually going to be a true fact. But there's more. Not only can we add the angles, what's the magnitude of negative 2i, right? The absolute value of this is, uh, or the, you know, the modulus is 2, right? The, it's uh, negative is, is the downwards direction. 2 is the size. Well, how did I get to 2? Well, since each of these had a radius of square root of 2, and I multiplied them, square root of 2, times square root of 2 gives you 2. So it appears that you can add the angles and you can multiply the radii. And if we had more time, or maybe it'd be a good thing for you to move to do right now, but if you were discovering this, I'd say pause the video, make up some more complex numbers, see if this holds true. But I'll tell you right now, it does. So the statement that I would say is when two complex numbers are multiplied, their angles are added to each other, their arguments, and their radii, moduli, are multiplied, P-L-I-E-D, are multiplied together. Um, you know, in a formula, it looks really messy. We say, all right, if you're doing Z1 times Z2, and I think this formula is in your book, so um, honestly, I would recommend, you know, starring the purple boxed idea instead of some goofy formula. Um, but if you do Z1 times Z2, uh, it's going to be R1 times R2. That's going to be the right multiplying the radii uh, times cosine theta 1 plus theta 2 plus i sine theta 1 plus theta 2. And what is all this? This is just putting uh, the polar form of a complex number into this statement, or putting this statement into the polar form of complex number. Okay, so if I was going to multiply two complex numbers, well, I could do this problem right here in two ways. I'm going to tell you what the wrong way is first. The wrong way would be say, okay, cosine of 5 pi over 6 is uh, root 3 over 2, and sine of 5 pi over 6 is 1 half, times 2 is that, and then multiply that all together. You, you have to do a ton of work. And in the end, the answer on the, or the problem would probably say, leave your answer in polar form. So you put it back in, into rectangular form, and then you have to switch it back to polar form anyway. Now, what a huge waste of time. It's going to be a lot better if we think about using this idea, let's think about the, this is a new radii. So R1 is 2, R2 is 7. So R1 times R2 will give me 14. That's going to be the radius of the new number. I know it. I'm going to circle that. Uh, this is theta 1, and this is theta 2. So theta 1 plus theta 2 is going to be 5 pi over 6 plus 3 pi over 2. Uh, sometimes you do have to do some fraction math here. 3 pi over 2 can't add that up because it's not over 6, but if you make this 9 pi over 6 instead, just multiply everything by 3, uh, you get something you can add up. And we get 14 pi over 6, and that will reduce to 7 pi over 3, which will actually reduce further just to pi over 3, since 7 over 3 is greater than 2 pi. So by adding the angles, it actually goes around a full circle and gives you the new angle. All right, so now I know from this statement 
that the new number is going to be 14 times cosine of theta 1 plus theta 2. No, there. Which is cosine pi over 3 plus i sine theta 1 plus theta 2, which is pi over 3. So by doing this, I have basically separated out the easy parts from the hard part, or I've made it all into just very nice, easy chunks, right? Adding fractions, multiplying numbers. I don't have to foil anything. I don't have to even think about i, right? The i is just hanging out there. I didn't have to think about i squared or any of that. And now if I want to put this in rectangular form, I just have to recognize from the unit circle that this is root 3 over 2. It's positive for this first quadrant. Nope. This is 1 half. I know the unit circle. This is root 3 over 2. They're both positive. Uh, and then multiply them by both by 14 <clears throat> to get the final result of 7 plus 7 root 3 i. However, and you know, I put that here, I put that in a box, but I'm also going to put the polar form in a box because the polar form is also a perfectly valid form of a complex number. And if you are doing a problem, at least for me, and the answer does not, or the question doesn't specify which form to leave it in, you may choose either. And I would encourage you to choose the easiest form. Uh, in this case, right, I, I think the easiest form would be polar form. And in fact, if you try to show off and get fancy and put it in rectangular form and then you screw it up, you probably would lose points. I know on like an AP test, you would lose points in that case. Uh, so, you know, don't, don't show off unnecessarily. But both answers are acceptable unless it's stated otherwise. Let's do another one. So we talked about multiplication. That's probably the most important use uh, of this. In fact, I would say, you know, you might want to pause this video right now and go do 10 problems or do all the homework problems that, that Im involve multiplying two complex numbers. Because this big idea is going to really help when we do uh, complex roots later on. But you can also use this idea to divide complex numbers. So in the past, in chapter, whenever we did this, 1 or 2 or p, we would do this division. We could do it in the past, but we'd have to do the conjugate and multiply by 1 minus root 3 i over 1 minus root 3 i. And doing that would allow these i's to cancel. But we have to foil a bunch of stuff out. We get roots everywhere. It's a huge honking mess. And it's not needed. If we're dividing two complex numbers, we're going to think about dividing as reverse multiplication. So in multiplication, we multiplied the radii. So here we're going to divide the radii. And we're going to subtract the angles. I'm going to say angles. So when we divide the radii, we'll do like r1 over r2. And we'll do theta1 minus theta2. So now I mostly, actually it turns out that the hardest part of this problem is instead of having to do any foiling, is just I have to put both of these numbers into polar form. So I'm going to call this z1. I'm going to pull the bottom number z2. And let's work on z1 first. So where is that? That is over in the third quadrant. It has... Oops, Root 3 is the long side, 2 is the short side. So the radius is going to be 4. I recognize that this is a special right triangle. Um, if I didn't, I could use some, some trig and square those out. Uh, and I recognize from my unit circle ratios that this angle is going to be 7 pi over 6. Just from the sketch. Z2. What does that look like? You could draw these on the same plane if you if you really wanted to. It's not a big deal. Uh, I'm going to do it separately. That's over 1 and up root 3. That's another special triangle. So that's root 3, 1. That means the radius is going to be 2. And the angle is going to be pi over 3. Okay. So then uh, I am dividing z1 by z2, and that's how I'm dividing it. So I'm going to think about 
R1 over R2 is going to be 4 over 2 or 2. That is, the new number, the result of this division, will have radius 2. And theta 1 minus theta 2, I'm going to subtract the angles, is going to be 7 pi over 6 minus pi over 3. Okay, I can't subtract those yet, or, or I can't subtract those at this time because pi over 3 is the wrong denominator. So let's write that as 2 pi over 6. Now I can subtract them, and I get 7 minus 2 is 5. 5 pi over 6 is going to be the new angle. So I know that this division problem, instead of doing all that garbage with conjugates, think about how long that took us way back in chapter uh, 1 or 2, whenever we last did that is going to be 2 cosine of 5 pi over 6 plus i sine of 5 pi over 6. And that's it. And at this point, again, this is a perfectly valid, perfectly valid form of a complex number because it's got a radius, it's got an angle, it's got an i. That's all you need. But if you really, really wanted to show off, Again, I don't, I don't think you should show off, but if you wanted to, uh, cosine 5 pi over 6 is negative root 3 over 2. Sine of 5 pi over 6 is 1 half. So this would be, the 2s would cancel, and you'd get negative root 3 uh, plus i as the result. And if you were, again, doing this with the conjugate method we talked about earlier, you would get this method, this thing right here, but it would be a whole lot more work. You'd be filling the page with, with stuff. So at this point, we've talked about uh, complex numbers in the complex plane. We've talked about multiplying them. We've talked about dividing them. There's one more thing that remains, which is talking about exponents. But before we do exponents, I think it's going to be really important for you to just sit down and practice multiplying and dividing, because what are exponents? than just repeated multiplication. So what I'd recommend you do right now is uh, I'm gonna cut the video, go do that chunk of the homework problems, get really good at it, and then come back to the next uh, section of the video, which we'll put up in a little bit, that talks about how you do complex uh, powers and complex imaginary roots. Thank you all, email me with your questions, and I'll see you all next time.